Hello, welcome. I am going to create an 8x8 eight eight album that's going to have a flap. I did a prototype. This is what it's going to look like. So you're going to have, pay, don't pay any attention to these measurements. Uh, you're going to have two 8x8 eight eight panels and you're going to have two, excuse me, three 8 uh, by one and seven eighths. I apologize, I'm stuttering because I'm looking at my measurements and that's not what we're doing. Um, we are going to be doing an eight by eight album and you will need one, two, three panels that measure eight by one and seven eighths. So if you wanna go ahead and get those cut, this is how they're gonna lay out. And this was my first one, it worked perfect. I'm hoping the second one that I'm doing this video on will work as well. I will be honest, um, I did struggle a little bit with getting the angle right on this. So when you cut your pieces, you are gonna wanna come down, what did I do? I just saw a little snaggy here, I wanna trim real quick. These originally measured one and seven eighths, and then I cut, I marked down at one and a half at each end. And then I found where my middle was, which is gonna be four inches on this album, and then draw your pencil line from this score mark to the center where the four inches is, and then you're going to cut that and you're gonna remeasure and you're gonna cut that so that you should have this piece. Um, I had to mark one in black because I kept missing the line, so don't just don't pay attention to that, okay? Now, when you get those done, you're going to need two full sheets of whatever color um, cardstock you want to use, you need to have 25 inches in total to, to get this to work. There's going to be a little extra down here on this end. Can you see that where I'm pointing? Yeah, this end. But what you have to do is make up the difference. This piece ended up coming in at one and a half inches, and I am allowing for a half inch uh, tape coverage on these two pieces. And the reason for that is I do not want, by the time you get these all lined up and you get the Tyvek on them, these are gonna have quarter inch spacing this is then going to come in with another quarter inch spacing and then you're going to have a quarter inch spacing and then you're going to have a three-eighths inch spacing. So trying to get that extra um, inch, this is going to be at one and a half and then you're going to uh, put tape on each side at a half inch. I did not want these seams to come anywhere near here. I don't care where it lands on the big piece, on this side, on the right side, but it was important as to where it landed here on the left side of that big piece. I want it to stay away from this gusset that we're gonna be creating because that becomes a weak point if it's not solidly secured. So you're, you're gonna cut 10 inches tall because we're gonna use a, a, a one inch um, over to pull over one inch roughly at your left side in, and you're going to have a little bit more than one inch on your right side, but we're going to be trimming that, so that doesn't matter. But get 25 inches, it makes it workable, and you're not working with a super small seam that you've got to cover. So I am going to start adding the Tyvek. Now you're gonna need three pieces of Tyvek. 
I have used these <laughs> these three with the intention on a different album. So I have scored them so many times I had to use black magic marker to identify where my score lines are. Some of these have been scored so many times, but I didn't want to waste the tie back. So I am using it. But again, like I said, I had to mark it. But the other thing I notice is it gives a good visual aid of what I'm trying to do here. So these two, I do believe, are the quarter inch gusset. Yes, that's quarter inch, that's quarter. This should be three eighths, yes. <clears throat> so you're gonna want two of these where you've created a quarter inch gusset and one where you've created a three eighths of an inch gusset. So what I did is I cut a two inch piece and then I scored it at seven eighths and then at one and a quarter. Oh, that got, that gave me a three eighths on this. Hold on here. Two inches, scored it at seven eighths and at one and a quarter. That's three eighths of a gusset. I don't want that. Uh, this one was two inches. I scored it at three quarters. And, okay, so I am off at least on two of these um, by a quarter of an inch. So I'm gonna reverse the side so you don't get confused. Two inches. We want a quarter inch gusset. And we want it roughly in the middle of the tie back. So you're going to score at seven eighths and again at one and an eighth. That creates a quarter inch gusset roughly in the middle of this two inch piece. You're going to do that two times. And then the third one at two inches, you are going to then need to cut it at seven eighths of an inch and at one and a quarter inches. That gives us the three eighths of an inch gusset so that would, this is this is a piece that's gonna go on the end. <clears throat> and like I said, this is the second one I built, so you're gonna kind of learn right along with me. But get your score marks on the Tyvek correctly, because then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your pieces and you are going to run tape on both sides, and then you're going to take your chipboard and you are going to run it right up on that score line and you're gonna tape it secure. So on the end piece, this is what you're gonna be looking at. A 3 eighths of an inch gusset in between the two pieces. The other pieces, you're gonna be more of a quarter inch gusset in between the two pieces. It makes a big difference. And the reason this one's going to be at 3 eighths is it's gonna roll over <clears throat> This is the piece that's rolling over, so it's got to absorb quite a bit. It's got to absorb the roll, and it has to absorb what you're putting in here, and then it's coming over this. So we needed that extra eighth of an inch so that this would come over nicely. And then we put our, we're gonna put three magnets to hold that down before we put our paper down. But that's what the end result is supposed to look like. So I'm gonna go ahead and get tape <clears throat> on my uh, Tyvek. <clears throat> and if you're new, I use Tyvek. It is a shipping envelope, a mailing envelope that you can get at most um, office supply stores. You can also buy them online. Uh, there's also a website that I work with quite a bit. It's called Scrap and Create. She sells them. <clears throat> so you take your tie back and you cut it roughly the length of your project, which mine are all too long, so I'll go in and trim them because I was working with a bigger album. But you want to cut them for the length and then cut that two-inch width. So I'm going to put these on a trimmer and I'm just gonna trim. I don't care how much I'm trimming off because it's not quite that necessary for these to go, 
from end to end. So even if they come up a little bit short, that's fine. The reason I use Tyvek is it has a great resilient factor to it. It takes the bend, the constant working back and forth of these hinges very well. And because it's a slick surface, by time you go add your cardstock to it, this is what's taking this motion, this. So this Tyvek is what's rubbing against the rough edges of your chipboard. So then when you put your cardstock on, the cardstock is then riding along the back of the Tyvek. So it's, if you will, kind of float, floating across it, which takes a lot of the burden, the wear and tear out of the cardstock and it will minimize, I will use minimize, where you see the tearing of the uh, cardstock. Now I'll tell you personal experience on my albums, I'm using this, I have no tear. And I've been doing this for a very long time. But I'm using the word minimize because how you put your album together is gonna to be completely different than how I put it together. So I cannot guarantee that you will not have hinge tearing. So I will go ahead and get my tape put on. And I've gotta find my fingertip cover because it tears my skin terribly. So I need to take a look at this and I want to remark my this paper um, or Tyvek scores very easily so I'm just going to mark where I need to be here I need to be at 7 eighths and 1 and an eighth on two of these so I'm going to be at seven eighths and one and an eighth. And I wanna run my tape right along where I can see. Now you should have score marks on yours that you can fold and follow along, but I've abused these two pieces so much. I can't tell what I'm doing anymore on them. All right, so here we go. So I'm gonna put this one down. Should be quarter of an inch. I'm gonna measure that real quick. I want them to be even. Oh, I'm right on. I'm such a lucky girl on this this morning. Oh, yeah, it is morning for me. I don't know what time of day it is that you're watching. Now I'm going to burnish. I want all the air bubbles out. I want that tape down on the Tyvek because that's where you'll find weakness if air gets in and dries out that tape. So give it a good burnish. So I want to be at one and an eighth, uh, excuse me, at seven eighths and one and an eighth. I'm gonna be at seven eighths and one and an eighth. I'm gonna, because this one's been abused so much, I'm gonna make another mark here. At an eighth and seven eighths and one and an eighth. <clears throat> so then I'm gonna take my tape and I'm gonna kind of follow those black marks right along. I love this Tyvek. I've scored a couple of these pieces so many times and it just holds up. I've tried other methods, but out of curiosity, but this I'll come back to every time. Now this one, I want at, I want at three eighths in here. So if I go at one 
and an eighth, I'm going to come in here at three quarters. Three quarters, one and an eighth. Three quarters, one and an eighth. I'll put tape on the rest of this, but I want to get this done. So um, always put your tape right where that score line is because that's where you're going to be butting up your chipboard to. So you want that tape to be your guide when we get these done. Now I think I've got some quarter inch tape over here and I'm gonna finish these off because I want these nice and secure. I'm hoping this turns out because it would be an embarrassment to get to the end of the video and then I didn't think something through. My, my struggle, and I'll be honest, I've not done this before, so my struggle will be this piece right here because for some reason my brain just doesn't work with the, the, the analyzing of that. I, I have a very hands-on, not numerical person, so I have to play around with many samples to get what I want and then um, make my permanent piece. So now if somebody has an easy way to figure out the dimensions on this for wrapping and for layering additional, um, please leave me a kind message on the bottom in the in your comments or email me with a video link. Uh, my email is mymessyfingers at, oh, it's mymessyfingers55 at gmail.com. I'm always open to learning. Okay. my big one. No, this is my big one. This is my big one here. Okay, so I'm going to set this one up over here. I don't want to get confused. Now, what I'm going to do is uh, like I've indicated, I had two 12 by 12s. I cut them down to 10 by 12. And then I made a one and a half inch spacer to keep the this line out of one of the gussets. So we're gonna go ahead and put some half inch tape on this. Or did I make that half inch or three? No, I did it three eighths. I did it at three eighths. Yep, it's at three eighths. this all kind of cobby wall, but it, it, it's how I figured it out and made it work for me because I know I'm cutting a little bit off this right side, this end. All right, these two go here, and then I'm going to take off 
this one. And I'm going to lay this down and I'm going to follow the tape line. It looks like it's just a hair too long here. Give it a burnish. Trim off this excess here. Okay, so I'm going to lay it down here again. Follow the tape line going up. Give it a good brush. Now, if I put this on my pad, put it out of the way. So, see, I have 23 inches here on the pad, and then I should be just about two inches. Um, I'm an inch and three quarters extra. But again, this is where we're going to be trimming, so I want that extra here in the event I make a boo-boo. All right, so now let's go ahead and get the score tape, my three-eighths, this is my three-eighths. Put that up there so I've got that out of the way. All right, so I'm going to take the tape off just one side for now. And then I'm going to take this edge and I'm going to come right up on top of that tape. I don't care if it's off up there. I'm just getting it on here. It doesn't matter. Score it. And then I will take the tape off this side. Come on. It's not playing nice with me today. And then I'm gonna take one of these pieces that measured one and seven eighths across, and then I'm gonna put that right down on that next piece and then what I should have here is a quarter inch gusset and that's what I have. All right <clears throat> now this is the next big piece is going to go on so we're going to put it on the spine first and make sure you're putting your score tape on the same side. I've done that where I've I have flipped these over and then put the wrong side down. So I'm gonna come in here and just line right up on that tape. And I will verify my measurements. I usually have the score mark to help guide me in. Okay, so I see where I need to be. Come on, well, for Petey's sake. There we go. And then put this down. And before I burnish, I want to make sure I got my querent I do. Silly girl. Do you see what I did here? <laughs> this is supposed to be the big panel. Oh my lord. Well, I break out my friend undo. Ah, what a silly girl. Come on. Off of there. I 
I may have to use a little bit of glue on this because I'm getting some paper. Let's see, it just sticks to this Tyvek. And you give a good burnish, this Tyvek and the tape and chipboard all stick together really well. It's just amazing. <laughs> oh, Pete's sake. Okay, it's coming up. It's leaving some tape behind. I will just re-tape it. I'll pull it all off. There we go. <clears throat> I cannot believe. It. I think it's because it was it was the closest piece is why that happened. All right, let me get back in here. So this is going to be at a quarter inch. Perfect. Put this back down. I'm just such a silly girl. It wants to come up off of that because it's still a little damp at that end, so I'm going to sneak down here. There we go. Now I have the correct piece. So I'm going to lay that right on the tape. And before I put that down, I'm good to go. All right. Now we have... That's for the three. I'm short one. Did I not cut enough? Uh, well, that's okay. It's quick and easy to make another one. I want it roughly at eight inches because that's the length of my... And then I do want this at two. I don't really need to have it any bigger than that. And this one will give me clean score lines to play with. So I'm going to come in here at seven eighths and then one and an eighth because I need another quarter inch one. See how nice and crisp those are when you haven't been messing around with them. I'm going to push them back. Where's my bone folder? And then I'm going to push it back. And I'll show you here that what you're doing is you're creating that gusset by scoring those. Now it's really easy to see where that score line is. I'm just going to follow it all the way to the top. I'm going to do the same on this other side. Follow that score line all the way to the top. Yeah. 
take one side off. And then I'm going to lay this right on that score line. Come here. Just lay it right there. Push it down. Burnish. And then I'm going to take the other side off. Now this is my 3 8 inch hinge for this piece. So we're going to take this off. And then I'm gonna take this and butt it right up where these black markers are because those are now my guides. So much easier to work with the little ones and then I'm going to line that right up and before I push it down I want to make sure that I've got a no I'm sitting right at three eighths three eighths the top part is off a little bit so I can actually see if we don't burnish it down it's easier to take up I need to move the top in just a hair. There we go. There we go. All right, so these will all bend. And just so that you understand, when I make my albums, I will always use a quarter inch gusset because I want to make sure those gussets can absorb the amount of paper that I'm going to be pushing down into the gusset and then I still want them to be able to turn in and create a nice squared off album. So what we're going to do next is get this guy on here. I am going to start with my left end and I am going to put my finger thingy. I'm going to put um, two strips of half inch tape because that's going to give me my one inch marker for this end. Um, if I keep, if I do this um, in particular on this one because I'm critical of the next end, I also want my corners on this to look crisp and clean. So if I know that I'm right at, at an inch, at least on one end, it should look okay. So now I'm gonna run half inch. Around the edge. ran out of tape. So bear with me. I apologize for the crinkle noise. I just got a, a big supply of tape from one of my 
online stores that I craft for and she tapes them all together. So it's like, uh, I've got a package I have to kind of sort through to get to it. Okay. So let's finish this. I'm not gonna worry about putting tape on this left end yet uh, because I wanna get it cut, the end cut and ready to go and then I'll put the tape on. Now, this is where I'm gonna start at my one inch and then I should have a half inch left between each tapes. And then if you can see down here, I have at this peak, I am sitting here with seven eighths. So I have plenty to work with on this end. Now I tape the reverse sides. I'm going to use my three eighths inch tape Um, for most of it, but I'm going to use half inch tape along the hinges. So I'm going to come right up to the edge of the chipboard on both sides of the hinge. Here, guess it. And I'm going to do that all the way. I want to make sure there's some good tape coverage. And then on this side here. And then I'm going to do the same down here. I'm going to start right at the corner of that chipboard and go up. Corner of the chipboard. I would use 5 8 inch tape here, but I'm running low, so I'm going to save it for binding the albums, my albums, uh, my signatures into my albums. Okay, now I will use 3 eighths of an inch on the rest of it. So I'm going to put one here. I'm going to go roughly eyeball it for the middle. Put another. Now you can put on as much tape as you want, but I do find that if you scrimp on the tape, you end up with weak spots like the uh, cardstock pulling up, bubbling up. I think you've all experienced that. So if that cardstock is down on the paper really good, you should not have that issue. Spots here that need to be burnished really well. Okay. Oops, turn over. Now I'm going to set my right side corner in place. I'm gonna get my, I'm gonna eyeball my half inch down here, make sure it's straight. Then what I'm going to do is fold back on all, I'm gonna plant my hand here. I'm gonna fold back and I'm gonna take tape off one of the spine sections. 
keeping a firm hand. I'm gonna grab this. Now, I'm gonna give a gentle pull, a gentle one, because what you don't want to have happen, see the nice even spacing, what you don't wanna have happen is, is one end uh, puckering like this, because you didn't give it a good pull and then you've got a problem. You gotta either tear it out or you've gotta use some undo to get it off. But by giving a firm, gentle pull, you're spreading this out the way it should be so that you've got a good clean gusset. So now I've got my, my plant over here. Now I can feel free to remove the tape off one big panel. Same process. I don't want any of this, so I'm gonna give a good gentle pull and I'm gonna lay it down. Now we're gonna do the same on this side. Oh, come on. Grab this, I'm gonna give a gentle pull, lay it down, and now I'm gonna take off this piece, this piece, and I'm gonna add some tape here. I should have done that already. Because I need this down, so I'm just going to follow the angle of this cut. Oops, come back here. All right, still giving a firm pull. Now I'm gonna lay that down. Now we burnish. Okay. I'm gonna show you, I can work with it, but I wanna show you what happened here. I had this line a little bit farther in here. Um, I would have preferred that it be a little bit farther in here. So what I should have done was pulled my work a little bit more, maybe an eighth of an inch more to the left. This would have come in here about here, but the fact that it is secure onto chipboard, I'm fine. If this had been in here, it would have been a problem, but I would have spotted that definitely long before I planted all this down. But that is a, a real critical piece that this not fall inside your gusset because that's gonna do this. Here's your weak point. Okay, now. I am going to, I'm trying to think this through how I put this together the last time. I do need to take up my rubber mat. I apologize if we're black on black now. I found that the um, white gave contrast when I'm working with black on black. I have to remove it when I'm working on with white paper. And then come over here. 
Now, usually I explain this piece. So let me, I was messing around on the internet and found this little guy and it is a wonderful tool for me. I love it. I found it at uh, colorwayarts.com. It's a miter tool and it's nicely weighted and it does come with a shows uh, that the chipboard thickness that it will match right up to but it's a two-in-one trim and miter tool and I don't know I don't remember what I paid for it but if you go to www.colorwayarts.com they're going to have this um, I like using it. It's well weighted, so it stays in place when I'm working. Now, I'm going to come in here. This ends up being a little wonky because this is not a square corner. Okay, that came off pretty easy. And then I'm going to come up here and do the same. Get that in there as square as I can. Okay. I'm going to put tape here now. I'm going to use half inch tape. But I'm going to do something before the tape, before we tape it down. Here's my point, here's my center. I need to cut this. So I'm gonna cut right in, and don't worry, we'll have plenty to cover it, but I'm gonna cut right up to that. So then when these get scored and folded over, they'll kind of overlap each other. I'm gonna start at this end. I'm gonna start working the tape up into the chipboard. I think I've got some that's interfering with the end of my picker. Center, down and out. And then I'm going to push this down and in on both ends to get that excess in there. Now I could have ran another half inch on up length of tape, but that just ends up being too much. But I do want to, now this particular end had two strips, so what I'm going to do is just run a bead of glue. My glue is not coming out very well. So that when I go to burnish this up into the chipboard that their that paper is going to adhere to the chipboard fairly easy. I, I'm not real concerned about this in here, really. Seriously, I think that's a lot of waste of glue, but to each their own. Okay, starting in the center, I'm going to pull it forward all the way down, encourage it to start bending. And then I'm going to start burnishing. Okay, center down first. 
and then down and out. Center down first, and then down and out. I'll come to that in just a second. side up. And then my tape and glue. This just gives it a good hold on the chipboard when you bend it over. Once again, I'm just going to pick it up and I'm just going to encourage it to fold over and then I'm going to burnish. Get in there in a little corner. Come on. That is not going in there nicely. There we go. Center down, get it secured, and then down and out. And you can see my little miter tool gives me a decent corner. They're not picture perfect, but they are a decent corner. Okay. Pull that in and smash it down. This is already smashed down. I'm going to run a bead of glue here. I'm going to take this off. Take off one side because I've already cut it. Burnish it into the chipboard. I'll add some tape over here. And lay it down. Then we're going to take off this side. And I'm going to burnish and fold it over. And see how that the corner covered it? You have it? where it overlaps, but that's perfectly fine. But your corner's covered. Now, what we're going to do is we're gonna take, not a sharp end, uh, and hopefully you have a nice rounded end you could play with, and I want you to bend uh, these gussets and push into them this cardstock. So then what you have is a nice working gusset. Now if you use something sharp um, and you end up tearing, I'm encouraging this because there's a lot on that in this one, and you end up tearing it, just run a bead of glue because you're going to be covering it. No one's going to see it. Okay, now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm coming on either side of the chipboard pieces and I'm giving a good encouraging burnish. Beautiful. Okay, going to do the same here. either side of the chipboard, giving it a good burnish. And 
and I think you can see where when I get done burnishing there, you can see the divot that's in there. And then turn it, and then the last one. And then we turn that and it goes right in place. And that is the framework for your album. Now, I will do a second video on adding in the pages. What I will be doing is covering this piece here and again pushing in on the uh, gussets here because it's going to be a lot of material. And then I'm going to make a larger piece which will roughly be about six inches. It will come out here. I'm going to push the paper in here, and then it's this section that I'm going to lay the pages on. These are 5 8 apart. There will be one, two, uh, th um, two, three signatures uh, in here. I might just take it down to two, because that's going to be half inch, that's going to be half inch. I'll work it out. It's either going to be two or three. Um, we'll go here, so then when the album closes, then your papers are laying into the right side the way they're supposed to. But I will come back with a uh, step two on this. But for now, here you go. This is your album. And like I said, if somebody's got some easy... Uh, tutorial on, because this, I'm going to be honest with you, this is where I'm going to struggle is covering this paper when I do use it on an album on how to anticipate the right angles. And for some reason, my brain just can't comprehend it um, because I want to come down an eighth of an inch in an eighth of an inch, find my center and then mark and trim the paper accordingly. And then a second layer on top of that, again, in an eighth of an inch, eighth of an inch, down an eighth of an inch. But these have to keep going up an eighth of an inch. And, and in all my samples, this is where I'm struggling, is, is on this angle. And my brain, for some reason, cannot figure it out. At least I'm being honest about it. So I will play around with that and come back with a second video and show you what I did. I will place three magnets here for my closure. All right, so come back for part two. I'll finish this up for you.